This is a production of Cornell University. Uh, thank you, Jacob. So my talk will be focused on uh, genetic architecture of, of cyanide in cassava. Um, so generally, uh, most plant species uh, liberate hydrogen cyanide uh, from cyanogenic glucoside, and this process uh, is known as cyanogenesis. Uh, so Lena Marine and Lotus Relin are the two variants of cyanogenic glucoside in cassava, and these are bioactive, uh, stable uh, plant secondary metabolites uh, that uh, provide uh, effective defense against herbivores uh, for those plants. Now, over the years, they have also taken up, uh, or rather evolved, to take up additional responsibility of providing plant uh, plasticity. Uh, and, and also specifically in cassava, uh, cyanogenic glucoside is synthesized in the leaf and transported to the root and usually are uh, partitioned between the peel of cassava and the parenchyma. Now, looking at specifically cassava with respect to uh, cyanide, now, cassava, as, as we all know, cassava is an important uh, economic and subsistence uh, crop, and uh, it produced efficiently under suboptimal uh, condition. And among uh, many challenges that cassava as a crop has, or, or as, uh, as a staple, uh, is that it has a high cyanogenic glucoside. And in the past, our colleagues have worked on the biosynthesis uh, pathway uh, for cyanogenic glucoside in cassava. Now, one thing to take note of is that uh, HCN, which is uh, uh, an acid trait of cyanide in cassava, is a major domestication uh, trait. Now, uh, within cassava breeding program and also uh, food product, uh, they usually use a simple diagnostic uh, test, which is called picrate uh, test, to, to assay for, for, for cyanide in cassava. And it contains uh, 10 shades of color chart. Uh, uh, ranging from yellow uh, to brown, and they represent uh, cyanide content in cassava in milligrams. Now, specifically, cassava is kind of categorized into two. You have the sweet cassava and the bitter cassava. And this uh, sweet and bitter cassava are also seen as those having low cyanide and high cyanide. Now, uh, to consume cassava, uh, especially in Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, there are a couple of traditional methods of detoxifying cassava or cyanide to get it to a level that is safe for consumption. World Health uh, uh, level, I mean, World Health recommendation uh, is 10 ppm, but some countries are even, you know, recommending lower than that. But uh, so this this list is not specific to any country, but this is what is practiced across uh, across South Southern Africa to 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 reduce the cyanide uh, uh, of cassava before consuming it. Uh, and I have a picture of uh, a woman that is roasting cassava. So basically, uh, you grate along with pressing and roasting. But uh, in addition, you can also soak or sun dry. Uh, you can wet or heat fermentation. Now, any of these processes would ordinarily, if followed strictly, reduce cyanide content of cassava, but oftentimes they don't follow it that way. So uh, uh, cyanide uh, poisoning still exists. Uh, it might not be in the extreme case in most cases, but you can still have uh, those extreme uh, cases. Now, with respect to how cassava is uh, an important staple in Sub-Saharan uh, Africa, if you look at world production of cassava, you'll see that uh, over 50% of that production is coming uh, from Africa. Now, th this, this, uh, now this, this ensures that, uh, you know, we have to kind of tackle the challenges that are associated uh, with cyanide in cassava. Um, so uh, one of those challenges is uh, cyanide intoxication, and this happens usually uh, during agricultural crisis and happen mostly within the region of uh, where you find poorest, uh, you know, the poor people living in rural area. And what happens is that during this agricultural crisis, they consume uh, a lot of cassava uh, consistent uh, on daily basis without successfully detoxifying it. 
Now this leads to uh, cyanide intoxication based on individual susceptibility. And this cyanide intoxication is called Konzo. Uh, it's a neurological disease that is irreversible and causes uh, permanent paralysis of the lower limb. Uh, it was first reported about eight decades ago, for example, in Congo DR in 2002, about 100,000 cases was reported. And I showed a blood picture that depicts the severity of this Kunzo disease. And uh, you can see in the severe case, uh, you, you, you end up being uh, permanently uh, paralyzed. Uh, now, it's been reported in a couple of uh, uh, countries within Sub-Saharan Africa. The most recent uh, is in Zambia between 2012 and 2015, about 40 cases uh, have been reported. Now, um, looking at this from the perspective of future projection, you will see that our World Food Program, uh, a prediction of uh, food insecurity as a result of uh, climate change is going to hit most uh, in Africa. And that means uh, there will be reduced yield of generally crop yield. Uh, and, and that means people would, uh, you know, uh, depend more on a crop like cassava for, subs for subsistence. Um, so in view of this, uh, what I try to do in, in this study is to understand the architecture and map the gene uh, 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 from breeding perspective, uh, more or less uh, providing uh, a tool uh, or a diagnostics that uh, breeders can use uh, to breed for the street. Um, now, in this study, uh, we're kind of collaborating with Embrapa, our cassava breeding program in Brazil, and we have access to over 3,500 land races and modern breeding lines coming from, you know, the 26 states uh, of Brazil. And uh, we have six trials that were done in 2016, 2017, 2018, and 2019. Um, and, um, and so we came up with uh, a schema for analysis, uh, both to process the genotypic data as well as uh, 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 do our phenotypic analysis and use Miss Monet to do a GWAS. Uh, so we looked at the phenotypic distribution and also uh, estimated variance component as well as heritability. Now, one thing to take home here is that for this data set that we're looking at from Brazil, the heritability is high and it tells us that uh, this trait will re would have high response to selection uh, in Brazil. Now, we did GWAS, and this was the result we got for the GWAS. We, we found, uh, we got two peaks, one in chromosome 14 and one in chromosome 16. And uh, that is explaining the regulation, uh, the variance that we see in our data set. And, uh, and so uh, it, it's safe to say that the HCN in this data set is regulated in an oligogenic manner. Uh, so going forward, we looked at uh, the marker effect of our candidate uh, uh, markers or candidate SNPs, both for chromosome 14 and chromosome 16. And that of chromosome 14 shows additive response, while that of chromosome 16 shows uh, dominance response. And uh, 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 so listed below is the number of uh, individuals in each of the genotypic uh, categories. But again, looking at the responses, uh, it is safe to say that uh, that's uh, uh, this particular trait uh, can be bred using a simple uh, breeding strategy within the breeding program. Uh, I also estimated uh, variance explained across the genome, but uh, across also uh, subgenomes of interest. Uh, specifically, chromosome 16 uh, explained 50% uh, of variance in our data set, while uh, candidate SNP in chromosome 16 explained 30% of the variation in our data set for HCN. Uh, but going forward, uh, we went back to literature to check since the biosynthesis pathway for this for cyanogenic glucoside has been reported in the past. Uh, so we, we, we looked at uh, the schematic, this represents the schematic you know, diagram of the biosynthesis uh, gene cluster. And uh, the, the arrow is showing the functional genes and their direction is showing the orientation of the gene. And this was done in uh, uh, cassava draft genome uh, version four. So we took those genes and we mapped them to uh, version six uh, of cassava genome that is used uh, to process our genotyping uh, data. Uh, so we saw that those gene clusters are, are actually in chromosome 12. Uh, so not in any of those regions that we found uh, peaks for, for HCN. 
So we did, uh, we did uh, genome-wide epistasis interaction, and we actually did about uh, uh, 400 uh, million tests uh, across uh, the genome. However, we found no interchromosomal uh, interaction uh, across the genome for, for this trait. Now, just uh, a brief, uh, just some takeaways so far for uh, the things uh, I've shown. I've shown that uh, phenotypic heritability and that of genotypic for this data set is 0 0.74 and 0 0.41. And then that the regulation is, uh, is responding in an oligogenic manner. And there are two peaks, uh, one in chromosome 14, one in chromosome 16, and they are explaining 16% uh, and 50% of duration, respectively. Chromosome 14 shows a disease pattern and explains 7%, while that of 16 shows a dominant pattern and explains 30% uh, of genetic variation. Uh, now, also, uh, we have no evidence based on this data set for epistasis interaction. Uh, going forward, we did a couple of complementary analysis to map uh, the gene uh, that is responsible for uh, the variation. And uh, this is just a summary table, uh, specifically um, in, uh, in, the, in, in the column where uh, I have the, the high LD interval. Uh, uh, for chromosome 16, we have six genes, while for chromosome uh, 14, we have three genes. And our candidate gene based on optimal p-value and uh, mutation prediction is a transporter in 16 and an ap based protein uh, in 14. Uh, and these candidate SNPs are found within the coding region of those candidate genes. Now, I had initially described uh, a situation in Africa uh, but we started with Brazilian data, and the reason is that uh, cassava originated from Brazil and was also domesticated there. In, uh, it was transferred to, to, to Africa, but there were additional improvements that was done that uh, changed the genome landscape. So the idea was to learn from Brazil and then apply that knowledge uh, to Africa. We went to cassava base and found uh, uh, lots of trials, about 393 trials that was done across 23 years. And we use it uh, for GWAS for this trait. We view the phenotypic distribution and estimated the variance as well as the heritability. And, and one thing we observe in this case is that uh, the, the genetic uh, variance uh, variation is low. For this, uh, we did the GWAS analysis. We also found uh, two peaks, one in 14 and one in 16. If you align it uh, with the, 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 the previous data set coming from Brazil, uh, you'll see that they properly align. So it's safe to say that at least based on this data set, the genetic architecture is conserved. Um, we also did joint GWAS analysis. We found the same peak, and even in this case, the candidate SNPs are well separated from the rest uh, of the SNPs, and we also aligned it with the previous two results. Uh, it, it, it's aligned uh, properly. So just to, to summarize uh, the results for this data set, uh, we saw that the uh, phenotypic uh, heritability varies across you know, the two data sets, and HCN is uh, conserved in both data sets. Uh, uh, HCN is regulated in an oligogenic manner. We found no evidence based on this data set uh, that uh, there is uh, epistasis interaction. And uh, so uh, since we didn't find any peak in chromosome 12, where we found those uh, gene clusters, we tend to speculate that perhaps uh, uh, domestication of cassava targeted upstream or downstream genetic regulation steps of HCN biosynthesis. Uh, so one of the deliverables is to uh, uh, develop this platform markers that is available uh, to the community uh, for breeders to use as breeding diagnostics. Uh, so our next steps uh, will be to do functional characterization, knockout, uh, validation of the uh, diagnostic markers in Africa, as well as uh, as well as expression studies. But in long term, uh, we want to look at the impact of climate change on cyanide uh, and also to develop materials that can be deployed to this uh, cyanide intoxication hotspot in sub Saharan Africa. Uh, that's what wouldn't have been possible without a lot of people. And uh, specifically, I want to thank uh, my commentary, Lucas Kelly, uh, Susan, and John Lewis, uh, but also the uh, breeding program in Brazil that is led by EDA. And also our collaborators uh, in Africa, uh, 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 Ismail Rabi, we're doing the, uh, we're validating uh, the, the marker set we developed. Uh, I also want to appreciate uh, Miguel. We're, we're working with the lab to functionally validate our findings. I want to uh, appreciate folks in Mueller Lab, especially Guillaume, whom 
uh, was always available to answer my question and, and supported me in this work. Uh, uh, Denise, initially when he was uh, still at uh, Cornell, uh, oftentimes I asked him such a school question and uh, he was generous to answer. As I said, I want to thank BCI, Cornell Cards, and Planned Reading. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'll take questions. Okay, thank you very much, Alex. I think we'll have a bit of time for a couple of questions. Ed Buckler says, nice thoughts, Alex. Do the GWAS peaks overlap with diversity sweeps seen in the HAT map? And does the biosynthetic cluster on chromosome 12 have little diversity according to HAT map? Yeah, so uh, if I get uh, the question to read here, so we, we, so we might uh, put uh, mutation uh, 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 alleles within uh, the HAP map, and we also did a uh, uh, whole genome imputation using the HAP map as a reference for that particular uh, chromosome uh, 16, and uh, we found uh, the same the same result. We uh, uh, we found the same region and the same SNP uh, uh, as our candidates need. If if that answers uh, the question. Okay, Kristen asks, thanks, Alex. Do you have a sense for how decreasing cyanide content may impact pest resistance and therefore potentially yield? So, yeah, they've been, uh, there, there's a, this question always uh, comes up. I didn't, I didn't look at this specifically, but uh, uh, what I try to do here is to understand the genetic architecture and perhaps this, this knowledge or information uh, would be used further uh, to do specific studies and how uh, it does affect that. Uh, previous, uh, I've seen uh, uh, about one or two studies that was uh, done uh, previously in ITA, and uh, it doesn't show that that is the case. But this is this is open uh, for further studies. But but with respect to this, I'm just looking at the architecture of cyanide. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Alex. Uh, I think we'll move on to our third speaker now. This has been a production of Cornell University, on the web at cornell.edu.